Hey guys, welcome everyone to my channel. So <laughs> I hope everyone's having a good afternoon or good morning. I don't know where you're at. It is 1130 AM, 1129. I'm starting just a minute early and I just had access and was at the arraignment of Josh Duggar. So it's been a pretty wild few days. Um, there's been a lot that's been sort of out in the media and this is what I'll tell you about what happened at the arraignment. <clears throat> so during the arraignment, Josh Duggar attended. He sat um, in a room and he was wearing a striped jumpsuit. So he had a black and white striped jumpsuit on. He had a odd smirk on his face the entire time, which I thought was really bizarre. He was at times smiling, at times he was seen like talking to someone that was in the room with him. He did not appear like disheveled at all. Um, the mugshot photo that was out yesterday, I am told that some of the Duggars are sick right now, so I don't know if he was ill. I don't know what happened there, but anyways. So um, who was there in attendance? I saw at least three Duggars, now obviously, you can put your name as anything on the Zoom conference. So um, Joy and Austin were in attendance, Jessa was in attendance, and Lauren and Josiah were in attendance. Beyond that, I could not recognize any of the names. Josh was represented by three attorneys, Travis Story, um, Gregory Payne, and Justin Gelford. So he was in Washington County Detention Center as they heard, like as they listed off all of the information. Um, his attorney, just Travis Story, did some speaking in the very beginning, but the primary attorney that did respond to everything was his attorney named Justin Gelford, and it was, or Gelfand, G E L F A N D. Now, <clears throat> they asked Josh at his arraignment a couple questions like, does can he read? What was his highest form of education? Basic stuff. He said he has a GED. And he said he can read. He has said he has never been treated for any mental health issues. And he said that he was not on any substances for any or taking any medications for any ailments at this time. So apparently the indictment is still sealed. And I spoke to the clerk of the court and they did not list the charges in court. But I have some information that I think will interest you and I'll give us probably some insight into what the charges are. So he um, was provided a copy <laughs> according to the, him. They asked him if he got a copy of the charges, if they understood like what the penalties were for it. He said he did. Um, his hearing on the case will be scheduled and it was scheduled for July 6th, 2021. And then there, I think there's a pretrial hearing scheduled in May. Okay. So when they asked if they would read the actual um, charges, his attorneys declined. So if attorneys decline, that means the court does not get to actually hear the charges. So what I do know is this, when the government, the judge asked the um, state or the federal government, um, if they sought detention of Josh until his trial and they said they did, they did. So the government wants Josh to remain in prison or in jail until his hearing. They do not want him out on bond. Um, the de defense says that they would like to obtain a bond. So they sent a uh, they set a detention hearing to, to see whether or not the judge will give him bond. Right now, at this point, the def um, it sounds like the, go the federal government is going to argue that they do not want him out on bond at all, typically meaning that they believe him to be a danger to society or a, his crime is significant enough that it would be, um, bond would not be allowed. So now the judge said that she would set the trial. So his detention hearing is at May 5th uh, at 1.30 p.m., and the judge said this to him at the very end while she was reading off the information about the hearing. She said this, given the nature of your charges, and I'm not la laughing because it's serious, but oh, and he's charged with think with two counts. So they were pretty clear that it was 
like they said, we plead not guilty to both counts. And then the judge sort of interrupted them and said, oh, so not guilty on all counts. So it sounds like whatever he's facing, the defense was set saying it was like two counts of something. So <clears throat> um, anyways, if you are, okay, so she said, given the nature of your charges, sorry, I have my notes here. She said that if he were to be released, and this is what's interesting, that he would require a third party custodian to supervise him on release and the conditions of the release would mean that they would have to interview this third party that he would have to live with that would be supervising him. They would also have to interview Josh and he would not be allowed to live in any residence that has minors. So they said there can be absolutely no children in the home if they release him on bail on bond and that is due to the significance of his charges um and he is not allowed around any children um without supervision and he will remain in custody until his detention hearing and then they'll determine if they will allow him out on bond and if he will be given condition and what those conditions will be so it sounds like this involves minor children. And um, I spoke to the clerk this afternoon and they did say that this case will be unsealed later this afternoon. Right now, this was a, it sounds like this was done through a grand jury sealed indictment. So basically um, what I'm getting, my sense of what happened here is that this was the case that, so they did the Department of Homeland Security appears to be the party, the division that was part of this arrest. And it seems to be in conjunction with the 2019 raid of his business. Now the 2019 raid had been a ongoing investigation into Josh and his businesses. And the Department of Homeland Security was the arresting agency. They used the US Marshals to um, put him in and place him, yes, yesterday into Washington County um, Detention Center. So right now, the charges, I haven't been able to find anyone that has any information on the charges. Um, not even the local news outlets seem to have it because they just, he just pled not guilty to charges. Let's see if I can see anything. Okay, I found it, got it. So the, 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 okay, this is what it says. A Springdale man, they just released this today by the United States Attorney's Office in Western District of Arkansas. So let me read this off to you. This just came out, press release by the Department of, um, it says, an Arkansas man was arrested for the receipt and possession of CP. So they say a Springdale man was arrested yesterday receiving and possessing material depicting S.A. of children. It says, according to court documents, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua James Duggar allegedly used the Internet to download child S.A. material. He allegedly possessed the material, some of which depicts the S.A. of children under the age of 12 in May of 2019. He's charged by the indictment with receiving and possessing CP. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years of imprisonment and fines of up to $250,000 on each count. A federal district court judge will determine any sentence and considering the U.S. sentencing guidelines and other statutory factors. It also says the case is being prosecuted as a part of the Project Safe Childhood a nationwide initiative to combat the growing epidemic of SA exploitation and which was announced in May of 2006. The Department of Justice led by U.S. Attorney's Office and CEOs, Project Safe Childhood Marshals, federal, state, and local resources to better locate, apprehend, and blah, blah, blah. According to U.S. Attorney David Clay Fultz of the Western District of Arkansas and acting special agent in charge, Jack Staten of Homeland Security and investigations in New Orleans made the announcement. The case is being investigated by Homeland Security. 
um, in Fayetteville and the North West Arkansas Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. The case is being prosecuted by Assistant U.S. Attorneys Carly Marshall and Dustin Roberts and trial attorney William C. G. Clayman of the Justice Departments of Child Exploitation and Obscenities. So this was exactly what I guess we were expecting. I'm not sure why it took so long um, for the arrest. So he has been, this is wild, you guys. So um, right now, let me see if I have any here. Was Jim Bob protecting Josh? Um, I don't know. Obviously, they knew about this investigation. They knew what was going on with this investigation. Um, the investigation was years in the making. So we know that his family had to have known. So here's what I can tell you about whether or not this family has been. So a recap includes that Josh is charged with um, possession and receiving of child or CP. And he's if convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison and fines of up to $250,000. He, the, a federal district court judge will determine his sentence. And this was alleged that he possessed these materials, some of which depicted SA of children under the age of 12 in May of 2019. So it's unclear what Anna knows, what the Duggars knew, but ongoing, they would have known about this investigation. Um, his, so the car lot was subject to a lot of issues. He did not have the proper permits. And I think there was a lot of issues because there was also not a lot of business happening at that location. I know that when the Department of Homeland Security did their, um, I know that when the Department of Homeland Security did their actual, um, well, we're getting really fast here. I'm going to just... Okay, messages are so fast um, and comments are getting crazy here. So I'm going to be turning on my members only chat. If you would like to join and Jesse can share a link if you'd like to join the chat. Um, the, the comments are just coming in so fast and my moderators cannot keep up right now. So um, what I can tell you is that if there is um, so this investigation was going on for a couple years. And here is what I'll tell you and what we've covered on this channel. In April of 2019, um, Josh and Anna kind of abruptly put their house on the market. When they put their house on the market, they moved into a property owned by the Duggar family. When the Duggars actually um, moved them into the property, Josh and Anna sold their home. Now, there was a lot of speculation then that Josh and Anna were going to be um building a house what i will tell you is that josh and anna were telling people that the reason they had to sell their house and move out was because the house had black mold so my sources say that the duggars were telling people that they had to move out of the house because there was black mold and they never actually moved back into that house and the house eventually sold so then in the fall of 2019, his business that was located in um, Springdale, which was a car lot, that was actually um, raided by the Department of Homeland Security. So um, did someone share the link for membership? I can put it in here and I'll pin it. Sorry, there was so many comments coming in. I just... Okay, um, um, Jesse, if you have a chance, if you could please share the link and then I'll pin it to the top of the chat um, so that people, if they can't see it, can join that way. Um, so in November of 2019, there was a lot going on around that time. So what happened was, is that 
people started noticing that there was like unmarked vehicles that were like SUVs. And people started also noticing that there was a lot of interest in Josh's car lot. So Josh's car lot had been the subject of a lot of issues with the city of Springdale. He never, he was, ha he didn't have the proper, um, what do you call it? He didn't have like the proper uh, permit for it. And he, so he was illegally at one time running this car lot. And when they raided the car lot, they were specifically looking for something that was in this shed. So I'll actually show you what the car lot looked like. Let me just pull it up. I'll show you exactly what it looks like. So you can see it. I'm trying to do this all on the fly. Okay, so this is what the car lot actually looked like. And they, I guess were apparently like interested in whatever was in that building. Now, there was a lot of issues with the specific car lot. It was like a just, it was like this dirt area that had little to no infrastructure at all. At one point in time, they had absolutely nothing like indicating the address. There was not any information, like it did not have the proper lighting for the lot. There was a lot of issues with this car lot. So immediately when they were going to this car lot and they knew that there was not a lot there, um, the rumors immediately started that they were looking specifically for electronics. So immediately knowing Josh's history, the, um, the initial rumor was CP and that was what was what we, per and that was what I reported back in November of 2019. So that was the ongoing rumor then, and it hasn't really changed since then because it was the Department of Homeland Security that was involved with it. So after this was actually um, investigated and raided, the, the lot actually closed down, and then Josh has opened through that time, they did not at all, um, during that time, they did not at all like move anywhere. So there was a lot of suggestions that there were things that were going to be happening with him because he didn't, one, he was still living on the Duggars property. So he was living in a, at one point in time, and I know you guys had some questions about where it was that he was living. So I can show you a photo. So up until recently, and I, I believe this is where Anna is living with the kids. Let me show you. This is where he had been living. So this is a building that's like on the Duggars property. And this is where Anna and the kids were living with him. So six kids, him all living in this warehouse that was converted into a home. Um, it looks like it's like a business, like a, a pole barn almost, or a metal framed home. So, Jim Bob was aware of the um, investigation, but the Duggars actually denied it. So I'll show you what the Duggars said. The Duggars downplayed the raid and they said that it was fake news. That's what literally what the Duggars called it. They called it fake news. Let me just pop this up. I should have had this all. So shortly after news of the raid hit, um, the Duggars posted on their social media and they denied that anyone in their family was under investigation 
which I think is crazy given that there was so much proof that this was going on. The initial reports were really confusing because they um, initially had reported that it was an FBI investigation. And then the FBI basically came out and said, well, no, we're not investigating him. And um, so then it was reconfirmed that it was actually the Department of Homeland Security. All right, so let me show you their statement. This was the Duggars statement after the raid. They said this. We are shocked to see a news report today that our home was raided by federal law enforcement agencies. This is not true. <laughs> to the best of our knowledge, it's also not true that any member of our family is under, is the target of any investigation of any kind. Living a life in the public's eye has taught us that it's best not to reply to every rumor and piece of information or, uh, or piece of fake news that is circulated online. It would be a full-time job if we attempted to do so. Uh, it would, um, however, because of tonight's media coverage, we thought it, it is important to address this rumor with you. Thank you for the love and support and we can always count on you and your fans and friends. So it's ironic, right? Because, oh, thank you so much for your um, girl you called it. I did. I got a lot of heat for calling it, but I'm not here to make friends when it comes to reporting. I'm just giving you the information that I found. Um, yeah, it's they, they were calling this fake news, even though there was literal proof of all of this happening. So like, I had people that were like in the area that were like driving past the Duggars and there was like law enforcement across the street watching the property. And I, I got so much crap because I published that photo, but it all makes sense now. If they are suspecting that he is dealing or sending images, he would probably be under surveillance of some kind because shortly after the raid, there were cars parked right near it was like a deputy from the area that was monitoring the house and people downplayed it and they said oh that's probably john david because he's a constable and it didn't make sense to me that it would have been a constable so i immediately thought well he seems to have police mark cars like watching him so and people would contact me periodically and say yeah there's cars out here there's cars cars out there now, the other thing um, that we talked about on this channel, and there's so much, were all of these LLCs that Josh and Anna opened. So around the time of all of this happening, um, Josh and Anna had all of these LLCs that they were opening, and it didn't make a lot of sense because Josh was not on any of the LLCs. It was all in Anna's name. And if you know anything about the cult, um, here, I'll show you. I'll show you the various LLCs that they've opened. Give me one second. I wish I was more like, I should have been more prepared, but I didn't know I was gonna go over all of this. But since so many of you guys have questions, I'd rather just address everything right now. Okay, so let's see, gallery. All right. Thank you guys all for your super chats. I appreciate it. Okay. So over the course of like several months, they opened up all of these like 
LLCs, like Lexington Contractors, which was put in Josh's and Anna's name, but then everything else was like only in Anna's name. So Ravenglass, Ravenglass, Sole Deo Gloria, and Cambridge Arbor. So five different, and then there was like one dissolved. So Josh was putting all of these LLCs in Anna's name. If you know anything about the Duggars and this cult, the women do not have the ability to work. They are not allowed to have any sort of access to work. And so this idea that Anna would have been involved in any sort of business is asinine. Um, you have to understand that Anna would not be allowed to work with the way that this the structure happens. So when we saw this happening, we were like, why are they doing all of this? They also had this home that a lot of people were asking about, like, why was the address different on his arrest report? It was a different address than, say, like, what that address is at the Duggar property. And I can tell you that the address was for a house that wasn't even literally, like, finished. So the property address he's using for his home address is a home that's under construction. Um, I don't believe that he's actually living in that facility because the, the Duggars, Anna and Josh and the kids are constantly seen on the property and all of Anna's photos are from inside that warehouse. So we know that that epi an episode of TLC, um, Duggars had a bridal show for Abby and it was inside that home. And all of Anna's pictures from social media show that they are living in that home. So the address that they have on the indictment, I don't believe is actually where they're living. I still um, believe that they are living in that warehouse because all of her photos match that building. Okay, and yes, um, Long story short, this is where we're at. Now, thank you so much for your super chat, Kristen. I really do appreciate it. Um, so long story short, here's what I can tell you about um, what the Duggars knew. So I spoke to my source yesterday and um, they said that they were with our, um, not them, but someone they knew close to them was with the Duggars last week and they had talked about nothing. So Josh and his dad were around people as normal, like nothing had happened. They weren't talking about anything. Um, Jim and Michelle were in Texas this week and they're at the Big Sandy conference. Now, Jim Bob was scheduled to speak and apparently my source says that during the middle of the week, so on Thursday, Jim Bob abruptly disappeared. So it's on Wednesday morning, which was two days ago, my source says that he left the conference. He was scheduled to speak at the conference. He didn't tell anyone he was leaving. And now they realize that he obviously went up to Arkansas to um, handle this. Now, if you're wondering, if Jim Bob is likely paying for his attorneys, my guess is yes, um, because they are using Travis Story, who has been Josh's cleanup guy for more than a decade. Travis has handled a lot of his litigation and civil lawsuits. Josh was sued in the state in federal court in Pennsylvania by a woman named Danica. And she alleged some serious allegations about him. That was actually withdrawn. I believe they settled. But Travis has consistently been like the cleaner upper of Jim of Josh. So if there's any question that Jim Bob is contributing to the defense of Josh, I would guess so, because I can't fathom how Josh, who doesn't seem to have a job, would be able to pay for three attorneys because he is being represented by. Travis Story, Gregory Payne, and Justin Gelfand. So Josh has been repeatedly, you know, protected by his parents. 
And if you just think of it in this in this sort of framework, Jill Duggar, her his sister, who has called out her father for all of this stuff and who does not want to be around Josh because he triggers her, um, she is shunned. She's literally shunned from the family. She is not allowed to go over to the house. Um, Derek and... Derek and her said a couple weeks ago that they have not been to the Duggars' home in two years. Yeah, he has three attorneys. See if there's anything new I can tell you. I'll see if I can find the indictment, if it's unsealed now. So in the terms of like how it works with the federal government, a lot of you guys were having some questions about like, how do these cases differ than the state? First of all, I'm like not an attorney at all, but I will tell you that when it's a federal case, it's completely different than the state. So a state does things in a different capacity than the federal government. So the state makes the arrest based on a suspicion, and then they do the arrest and then they collect the evidence. The federal government works completely opposite of that. So the federal government will build a case against someone and they will that will the investigation will remain under seal. Um, nobody will know that this investigation is happening. Nobody will be notified that they are un, under investigation. And then they do different things like raids. And then over time, they take this to a grand jury. And so all of this has been going on for two years. And so by the time you get to the place where a person is arrested, this means that a grand jury was provided all of the evidence that the federal government has on Joshua Duggar. And they, based on that grand jury um, evidence, they said that there was enough preponderance of evidence to go forward and charging him. So a grand jury is the one that looks at all of the evidence. They decide, yes, did they meet their burden of proof? Did they not meet their burden of proof? So in this case, yes, um, they've met that burden of proof by the grand jury to move forward. So that is why when someone is arrested on a federal side, they are held because the government has already done their investigation. Like it's already completed. They've been working on this for years. Convictions for federal cases are extremely high um, in the 90 percentile. I think most of these cases will end up in a plea deal, but like it's 95 or 97 or 99 percent conviction rate once you get the feds involved in cases like this. So that is why there's no bond. And now we know why Josh is not allowed around children. And Jill and Derek protected their boys. Yes. So let me just double check to see if Okay, let's see. I'm going to see if there's anything that's been released by the Duggars right now while you guys are here. I didn't see the Duggars on the, on the list at the arraignment, but and I also don't know if they're going to release a statement. The Duggars knew this was coming. They also were aware... Um, And they were aware of all of this, so they were praying with them. And Anna was apparently going to stand by them, and the family was deeply concerned. Um, about all of it, and they wanted to get to the truth. So what do we have here? Um, let me double check.
so far I'm not seeing anything on a statement from the Duggars. Um, most places right now are just getting the indictment information. Um, long story short, Dosh Duggar um, is charged with receiving and possessing CP. And the images that he was with, according to the federal government, as alleged in their indictment, were of images under the children under the age of 12. Um, and this is, um, yes, I've already, sh well, I've shown the, the indictment hasn't been released. I already showed um, the actual image, but I'm not going to put that up on my channel. Um, but I can, I'll read it to you guys one more time so you guys can hear it from me. And I'll just like read it to you guys. So here is what it says. This was released by the United States Attorney's Office in Western District of Arkansas. And it says, a Springdale man has been arrested yesterday for receiving and possessing material depicting of SA of kids. According to court documents, Joshua James Duggar, 33, allegedly used the internet to download CP photos, and he allegedly possessed the material, some of which depicts SA of children under the age of 12. This was happened in May of 2019. He is charged by the indictment with receiving and possessing um, CP. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. A federal district court judge will determine any sentence after considering the US sentencing guidelines and other statutory factors. This case is being prosecuted by Pro Project Safe Childhood and the case is being pr um, prosecuted by Assistant US Attorneys Carly Marshall and Dustin Roberts and the trial attorney of William C G. Clayman of the Justice Department's Child Exploitation Center. So um, I'll put the full, I'll put that fully up on my um, Instagram so you guys can all grab it and read it. And um, I'll keep you guys posted if there's anything or if anything more comes up. Um, to all of my new members, thank you guys so much. To all of those of you that have provided super chats, I greatly appreciate that. Um, I will be on the story all day. If you are someone that knows them or has any tips, you can feel free to reach out to me on Instagram in my DMs. And if you are not following me on Instagram, I would um, suggest that you do that. Um, Jesse can share a link for my Instagram and follow me there for updates as I will post periodically throughout the day. Oh, and I did reach out to Amy Duggar and she had no comment. She said, tell them I have no comment. So that was Amy Duggar's, that's your Amy Duggar exclusive, no comment. I They didn't say who the photos were of and they would never indicate that. Um, so they're not going to ever identify the minors in photos. That would be a violation of the privacy of the minor, Patty. But thank you for that question. All right. So I apologize for taking moments to pause. I apologize for any of that. Make sure that you are following me on Instagram. I'm going to get this indictment and post it there right now. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, make sure you do. And if you need background on the Duggars and you are new to the story, I would encourage you to check out my playlist, The Duggars, which has like 300 videos. Mind you, the Duggars have a humongous family. So there's like 20 adults in this family, plus spouses, plus grandchildren. There are a lot of people in this family. It's a huge family. They all have different things, but there's a lot of stuff specifically on Josh. And I will be working towards putting all of my Josh content into a single playlist so you guys can see that. There's a lot of information out there and I've done a lot of work helping to understand this cult. And I have an entire video about why Anna would stay with Josh. Um, also, I know a lot of people are being very hard on Anna. I would honestly just say like, she is completely brainwashed. She has been conditioned from birth to be obedient, submissive to her husband. And unfortunately, like because of that, she is just as much of a victim to all of this. And she is so conditioned to just trust because 
her faith tells her that she has to go to Josh for counsel for everything. So if you really want to support Anna, like telling her that she's a horrible, terrible mom and she's this awful human for continuing to procreate with him only continues to victimize her. It would be a lot more helpful to just think good thoughts for Anna and just remember that she is completely stuck in a situation that is horrible. Like no parent, no mother, anybody should be stuck in a situation like that. So I hope that her family, she has multiple family members that are not in this cult can help her get out and get away from the Duggars. Because clearly the fact that Josh is being harbored and enabled by his father does not help her in any way, shape or form. So long story short, um, speculating about the minors in this case does not help anyone. Speculating what the images are from does also not help anyone. So, um, and the state will never say who the, uh, the federal government will never disclose who that is. So further speculation of who the images are from really does not help anything. And it would only, it would only just further hurt any of the children if you attached any sort of rumors around that to them. So um, I um, will be back later with more, but make sure that you check out everything on my Instagram. And thank you guys so much to all of you who have joined. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up on your way out. And again, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. Okay, bye guys.